Now, the shock of a diagnosis of dementia for her father, Ken Meehan, caused fashion designer Deborah Veal and her family great distress, obviously. Uh, who would help them to care for him as his condition deteriorated? And who would support them during this challenging time in their lives? Well, St Joseph's is a dementia-specific care home in Shankill in County Dublin and is the only home in Ireland totally and solely dedicated to caring for people living with all stages of dementia. Deborah joins us now to uh, tell us about the care her father is receiving in St. Joseph's and why she's heavily involved in fundraising for the centre. Good morning, Deborah. You're very welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Tell us about your wonderful father. So he's amazing. Um, very special character. Um, very creative. Very um, in touch with the world. Uh, a, phil a philosopher. Uh, kind, caring, wonderful. And very patient with all of his children. <laughs> So I can only imagine the absolute devastation when you hear that word. Yeah. Dementia. Now yeah. you probably had an idea. Did you had you been seeing some signs or some questions about changes in the behaviour that yeah. may be led you to believe? We'd seen slowly little things, but actually it'd always been quite creative and absent minded. So sometimes you just would put it down to that. Really, I think when you know, as a family most people, they never really wrap their heads around this. You're always behind the curve with it because you don't really know an awful lot about it. And, and that's part of why we're doing what we're doing, to raise the awareness. Because it's, it's such a huge emotional shock for a family yeah. to face. Um, Professionally, he was an architect. Yes. And uh, that requires an enormous amount mm. of thought and precision. Precision. So, well, I, I can imagine that he would be dreaming and creating yes. and you know kind of be in his own yes. world yes. but then when it actually came to the work and doing all of that sort of stuff it yeah. would have been meticulous it would have had to have been mathematics you know so a very precise brain very precise brain so did you get indications maybe sooner because of that not really you know he'd retired um and was living uh, in wexford by the sea in the last beautiful house he created with my mom so you know it really does and i i, I think every case is very different okay so it's very tricky to, to and there's so many different types. His is definitely age related um, and it happens to some people a lot younger. What what was, so he's 87 now. Oh, 87. Okay. What was his reaction when he found out that he had dementia? Um, a slow and really um, very, um, do you know, he was very gentle with it. So he didn't, I, I'm not sure of the exact time where he actually realised. Um, and actually, what, what's subliminal, what's brilliant is that St. Joseph's kind of came in and helped us look after that transition period. We so, mentioned there, actually, in the introduction, yeah. that you, when, when you finally came to the conclusion, yeah. okay, this is the problem, no, we need to do something. Yeah. The next question is, where do we go? Who exactly. do we get help from? Exactly. And, and there wouldn't be an enormous amount of support out there. No, uh, no, no. And I think because the numbers have, are growing so quickly, I mean, I think 11 people every day are diagnosed, um, that the system isn't there for it, okay? However, St. Joseph's, which is fundamentally private uh, through Fair Deal, um, they ha are the only specific dementia care homes. Otherwise, they're attached to different facilities. Um, so there was daycare, which is a wonderful thing to sort of help people get become, um, I suppose, acclimatised to what was institutional care. Mm -hmm. and which is now becoming much more um, of a home specific and that's what we've been trying to do with that the butterfly method came in so when I first went to St. Joseph's it was an institution whereas now we have different lodges people are at the same stage um, so that they're less frightened by what they see perhaps you know it's a very they're I suppose the, 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 the patients people getting care less frightened yeah. for the family I can only imagine yeah. are they less frightened because I can't imagine that day bringing your dad uh, to no, a centre like that you know what it was a very gentle transition I can't say that enough how they helped us to do that and um, but having said that it's still a huge shock and actually I really do firmly believe people are myself included is scared of mental health mm. issues and things happening so you know a lot of stuff that happens we never really see until we're in that situation mm. had you discussed with him sort of the future and how the illness would progress and no. what kind of care he might want not or really needs. no not 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 really because we were living in it and so he transitioned in that way so we went from daycare to to you know and there are obviously very different stages but they happen for very different it, different people at different times so. So how did it change him you know what it actually didn't really fundamentally same person just the skills became less and less and you know it didn't change him he he remained the most gentle 
gorgeous person, you know. So, God forbid this has to happen. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is, is, he, is, is this the best way to have it happen? Without a shadow of a doubt. Until we find what we're going to help cure this, this, this approach is the right way. Um, because it really does help. You know, I can't say enough about the, the people who work in, in St. Joseph's. I don't have to name check the whole lot of them, but like they're just incredible. Sinead, Tina, the whole, gents, all of them. You know, they're not just looking after the people who are there. They're actually dealing with families mm. who are coming in all the time. Is there any guilt, I wonder, when you have to... Yes, there is. There is. When you have to sort of recognise, look, we can't care for him at yeah, all. No, there are, absolutely there is. But I think it becomes a security issue as well. That's mm. the biggest... I know, we all feel we should yeah. be able to take care mm. of our own, yeah, yeah. but then there's a limit to, to our skills. Look, um, I'm sure there are thousands of people around the country yeah. listening to you this morning and they will know exactly... Yeah. Yes, your situation or a version mm, of yeah. it. Uh, you talked about uh, um, St. Joseph's. It's yeah. it's um, not funded. No. has to raise all its own money, Absolutely. either through a, a fair mm. deal mm. or through fundraisers. You decided you wanted to do something about it. Yes. You went to your buddies in the fashion industry because people mm. will know, of course, Deborah's one of our leading fashion mm. designers. You launched three years ago and you got Philip Tracy to help you we did. with the very first one. <laughs> it was amazing. Which is know? extraordinary. I'm mean, just thinking we were looking at about 27 of his hats at the Royal Wedding there recently. Yeah. Uh, you did very well with that. You went mm. again last year. You're going again this year and you're being yeah. helped by... Paul Costello was coming. It's great to have um, a star come over. And so many, such amazing Irish talent throughout the world. It's lovely to bring somebody home to show. Not that they need any help, but it's a lovely thing. And also, yeah, Mark, you're right. The generosity of the fashion industry, unbelievable. Everybody from, you know, Louise Kennedy, Han Cody, I, I, Zoe Jordan's with us this year. Um, but also, it's a fashion event. Mm -hmm. We're presenting it at a high level. Be wonderful Catherine Condell, um, Lorraine Keynes, I'm seeing. We are so lucky to have the people on board. It's going to be a celebration. A 